The days of playing Pac-Man in your local arcade were long gone. Slowly the crowd of gamers started to die. Too much quantity was being produced, but such low quality. Almost no one cares about gaming anymore. Just watch some movies in the theater or shows on cable if you want screen time. Better? Get the latest PC. Why spend so much on gaming? Who cares about gaming? Gaming is just a combination of board games and the TV. Just a temporary trend. You tell your kids or be the cool uncle slash aunt to tell those youngsters of what was called gaming and how it died. Or how it almost died. You see, there was a company out there who knew what was going on. The market needed something great. Something to keep this genre and a countless amount of people working and having a good living. And Nintendo creates just the thing. Welcome to the third part of four of like Nintendo's underrated. In the first part, we talked about how Nintendo makes revolutionary consoles, and in the second, we talked about how Nintendo makes games for everyone. In the next, we'll talk about its community announcement and sphere, but right now, we're talking about how Nintendo saves gaming. Opposing consoles, please make your comments correspond with the topic of the video. For example, don't put comments about your controllers in this one, and do that in the first one, which was about consoles. I know I already did disclaimer one minute in it in every video essay I make, but since this is a series of videos on the same topic, I just need to mention it beforehand. So enough of stalling, let's begin to talk about why Nintendo is underrated, specifically for seeing gaming after the crash in 1983. To start off with, how big was it in the first place? 97% of the industry just was gone. Let me rephrase that. In just a matter of 2-3 to three years, the industry dropped so much that only 3% of it remained. That is not even a 20th. Let me think, think of it like this, okay? So you had a box of pizza all to yourself after your hard work. But then your fellow friend, in the case of the crash, the computer industry stole the box from you. They ate all of it, but the crust, and while throwing the crust away, missed the trash can once. They were too lazy to pick it up and you finally caught up. You go had a whole box of yummy yummy pizza. And now you just have a piece of infected pizza crust. There are chunks in the pizza story I did not include yet and we'll do so as we get explore more of the crash. We begin in the 1980s. We are the golden age of arcade games. However, a challenger approaches. The computer industry has created something called a personal computer, aka a PC. The first PC was created in the 70s, but now they are on the rise. Do you remember your first time you got to explore the internet in a personal matter? I remember that I was typing complete sentences with capitalization periods. When I was told that grammar didn't matter, oh boy did I go on a spree. It was so fun. Anyways, the internet was officially established on January 1st, 1983. Combine the interest getting released on a large scale with the rise of computers, you get interest. Alright then, so computers are interesting. But as an explain as we get from a oh, delicious pizza to an infected piece of crust, I know you give me a good question, which is why we're going back to the pizza story. You didn't let me finish. We will talk about this later. Later? You're talking about later? Just give me a contestant voice! Just let me finish this blup video. He was the one swearing now. Leave! Alright, whatever. Anyways, I talked about during the chase, they ate all the pizza but a crust. But how did they steal the pizza from you in the first place? Well, we all heard of quality over quantity, am I right? Well, here's what happened. There were too many games, and a majority of them were terrible. The greatest movie directors start off in indie movies, which is the first step to getting to blockbusters. Peter Jackson, director of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, started off with some, let's just say, lower quality movies to go with his budget. Lower quality productions don't earn a lot, but earn a lot compared to their budget. It is a small step, and it is a small step in money. Well, the gaming industry had a budget for big productions, but instead, they just created a bunch of small ones. Well, with that in mind, let's see the theft. The computer industry had big products. Then the pizza bite, pizza fight, I mean, it became big weapons. They only had two melee knives and a few arrows, but they were high quality. Those knives could cut an entire watermelon two perfect halves in one quick slice. And those arrows can come out the other side. The gaming industry had a lot of weapons, the weapons being baby spoons. Yeah, they had a hundred, but assuming they had the same wits, the computer industry would definitely win. And thus, the computer stole the pizza from the gaming industry, and the gaming industry is left with a dirty piece of crust. Yay! A piece of crust is not going to fill a stomach, especially an infected one. So, we're in 1985, and gaming is about to die. Great warriors, such as Atari, had given themselves up to survive. Some even died before someone took them in. Things didn't look good for the industry. We know what the crash was and what caused it to happen, but how does Nintendo help? Well. This is the 1980s, remember? So what might look old today was fresh back then, and most importantly, fun. 
as Nintendo became the knight in shining armor to save the day with the Excalibur being the great Nintendo Entertainment System, aka the Faticom. Introduced Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, and Metroid. Super Mario Bros. is a revolutionary platforming game. You jump underneath the logs, you break them, or get rewards. Simply jump over an enemy to vanquish them. And this game has plenty of difficult moments that adults and children will have equal difficulty doing. Because this is a whole new genre of video games. You won't have any experience. We have The Legend of Zelda. The franchise are some of the best sandbox games to date, and the first one did a good job foreshadowing that. You explored a fantasy world, and while most ports games include a lot of grinding repetition, these games have a lot more variety. These games are based on Shigeru Miyamoto, the de developer's love for outdoors. The Legend of Zelda games are pretty enjoyable for both indoor people, gamers, and outdoor people, those who love exploring. A lot of non-gamers would enjoy this game, and perhaps that is how it became the, one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, not only in quantity, but also in quality and scope. We have Metroid. This game took platforming, science fiction, and shoot games all together to make this special adventure. Not only is this game a unique experience, this was way back in the 19s where women were rarely a part of the main cast, and if they were, they were damsels in distress. This game has a woman main character who is in a spacesuit shooting away. These are just a few of the first these are just a few of the first party games. The console technology was ridiculously powerful, and other companies were motivated to make some games. Instead of focusing on quantity, they focused on getting the maximum quality possible. Just look at the endless possibilities. Why limit themselves when they can do so much more? Let's have the mm, hundreds of fun quality games became available to be played on this console. This seems pretty fun. Let's have this on top of our computer. Ugh. We can't afford both. Let's have just have this fabulous console and just do gaming. The hell? And thus gaming rose again. Nine years later, Sony was able to release their PlayStation, and seven years after Sony, Microsoft released the Xbox. But what would have happened if Nintendo wasn't there to save the day? Maybe gaming would have risen again. But imagine how far behind the industry would have been. You could make a case that the gaming industry could simply take from anim the animation software industry. But you might as well be teaching a fish how to fly. It just doesn't work like that. So remember that the next time you or someone else thinks Nintendo's horrible or overrated, if Nintendo's that, then what is Xbox and PlayStation, who watched and just became interested to throw some money in, got success off it, even though they'll probably deny it. If Nintendo's overrated and horrible, so is Lord of the Rings, which was the start to modern fantasy, and Charlie Chaplin, who played a very big role in the movie industry, and so many more OGs. Anyways, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!